Hey guys, it's X, and welcome to another episode of Frost Tanking Heroics. Oops, did I say Frost Tanking? I meant Blood Tanking. That's right. In one of my previous videos, I did say that I was going to try out Blood Tanking, and this is the video in which I will be doing that. I find that Blood Tanking is not as dynamic as Frost Tanking. It doesn't leave you a lot of room to add your own style. This is... Depending on your playstyle, this is a good or a bad thing. For me, it's a bad thing, personally. Uh, I like to have a lot more control over a situation. Um, I don't like to be pigeonholed into one style of play. And Frost Tanking really, really gave me a lot of wiggle room as far as that's concerned. It gave me a lot of margins to try out new things. And I found that very fun. <clears throat> so that's why I like Frost Tanking. Blood Tanking, as you can see here, the goal is to drop your death and decay spread your diseases, and then if there are a number of mobs that you're tanking, like more than three, you'll want to use Blood Boil. If there's only two or three mobs, you're going to want to use Heart Strike. So again, your rotation is Death and Decay, spread diseases, and then you choose between Blood Boil or Heart Strike. And that is literally it. It's a very simple way to tank. And uh, actually, it really helps in this instance, because this instance has is regarded pretty much as one of the toughest ones, if not the toughest heroic to run. Even the healer, if you'll read the chat, if you'll... Yeah, it, actually, it's still up on screen. If you'll read the chat, the healer's like, this is gonna suck. And he's asking everybody to make sure to handle their aggro well. Really, this particular instance is not... Um, it's not a healing nightmare unless the tank doesn't know what he's doing. If you are tanking well, then the healer will have an easy time. Uh, it won't be any more difficult than any, uh, and, and, than any other instance. So, again, you'll just stay behind this lip drop your death and decay and that will force the ranged mobs to run in towards you they'll run into your death and decay and then you'll just spread your diseases and then use blood boil or heart strike depending on how many mobs there are up the mobs go down easily the healer has a very easy time healing this And we can see here from the third wave, the process is the same for every one of these waves. You see the mobs coming in, you drop your death and decay, the mobs will run into it. Even that rifleman who is ranged is going to run straight into your death and decay. And from here you just spread your diseases and then spam blood boil or heart strike. If your diseases begin to tick down, respread them either using Pestilence before they run out, or by respreading them using Icy Touch Plague Strike Pestilence. You can see here I'm making good use of Blood Boil and Heart Strike. The mobs are separated into two mobs on the left and two mobs on the right. So I'm going to Heart Strike the ones on the left, and then I Heart Strike the ones on the right. This kind of lets me treat four mobs as two. Eventually, on the fifth wave, uh, you're going to encounter this boss. His name is Falric, and Falric will periodically fear the whole group. When he fears the group, you cannot break out of it using a PvP trinket or a Will of the Forsaken or anything of that nature. It's a fear that you just have to let run its course. While the group is feared, everyone is going to take a lot of damage. You can help the healer heal the rest of the group by healing yourself. If you'll notice here, my diseases are still ticking on him while we're feared. And when the fear runs out, I'm going to turn around and just hit Death Strike two times to help the healer heal me. My two Death Strikes healed me for about 10,000 points of life. So that helps the healer immensely because our healer is a Paladin healer. And Pally healers are really good at healing one or two guys at a time, but they don't have very many group heals. So, again... After being feared, I come in and I use my Death Strike twice to heal myself so the Paladin can worry about the other members of the group. And you repeat this process until Falric is dead. After defeating Falric, you will get a raid warning after a short time that says the spirits rise again, which you will see right there. 
and that means the waves of mobs are going to continue. Make sure you're back in the alcove with the rest of your group, drop your death and decay, and again just spread your diseases, and if there are a lot of mobs, use blood boil, if there are a few mobs, use heart strike. You're going to do this for spirit waves 6 through 9. After the ninth wave is dead, you're going to encounter the second boss of this instance. He's right across the room and he'll charge right towards you. Marwin is a very easy boss to tank. When I approach him, I like to hit him with Icy Touch two or three times because, as we've seen from one of my previous videos, Icy Touch is a very high threat ability. So I'll hit him with it two or three times to just make sure I've got solid threat on him. After that, it's just a matter of keeping up your diseases and holding aggro because it's a DPS race. Uh, he'll continually apply a debuff that reduces your maximum health, and he's just going to keep uh, trying to kill you while you kill him. It's, he's not a very tough boss at all. This guy, the Frostsworn General, um, I find has more dynamics than Marwin does. This Frostsworn General is kind of a boss. He's more like a mini boss. Um, you can see here, I've used up all of my runes and these other mobs come flying in. So I use my Empower Rune weapon and then drop my Death and Decay immediately afterwards. Don't be afraid to use up all of your runes on the Frostsworn General because Empower Rune weapon is going to be there for you and you will just be able to regenerate your runes and drop Death and Decay immediately. I don't see Empower Rune weapon used enough by Death Knights, not even DPS Knights use Empower Rune weapon that much and I'd like to see that used a lot more. After the big guy dies, and these mobs are nearly dead, I like to cast Anti-Magic Shell on myself. As these mobs die, they explode, and when they explode, they deal magic damage. So you can see from the runic power that I'm gaining on screen that I'm avoiding a lot of damage with uh, Anti-Magic Shell, and I'm gaining a lot of runic power for it. When you reach the Lich King, you just gotta tap him with any ability, as my group did, and uh, that'll force Sylvanas to run over to you, and then you just talk to her to start the event. If you'll notice here, um, our priest has aggro. They have a red unit frame around their name, so I drop my death and decay so that it covers the priest, and the ghouls jump on the priest, and that they immediately turn to me from taking damage from death and decay. The pattern is going to be, as you see right now, um, a small wave of ghouls is going to attack your party by jumping at you and then you'll have to take on a bigger wave of mobs. This witch doctor um, is technically the bigger wave of mobs but you'll see a, uh, a bigger wave of mobs every time you encounter an ice wall. So again we take out the ghouls and then here comes a bigger wave of mobs. I just spread my diseases, drop my death and decay and then use death grip to pull that errant mob back to me and take down that group. This pattern is going to continue all the way to the end of the hallway. Here at the end of the hallway, you encounter the biggest pull yet. Um, what I like to do is when the first big group of abominations and witch doctors comes along, I'll drop my death and decay, and then I'll immediately follow that up with an army of the dead. The army will do a lot to keep you and your group alive. When the second group of mobs comes around, because you're going to get two of them here, you're going to get two, maybe even three large groups. When the second one comes around, I'll drop my death and decay, and then again I'll use my empower rune weapon to get my runes back, and I'll use that to spam blood boil, and hard strike, and spread my diseases. As more mobs join the fray, I'll use pestilence to spread diseases to them, and then I'll use blood boil until death and decay comes back up. So again, just spread your diseases, and then use blood boil to hold on to aggro, and once death and decay comes back up, drop death and decay, and that's going to solidify aggro on you, and that's pretty much it. So by this second, maybe third wave of mobs, if your death and decay is down, you've finished the instance. You can see Arthas slowly approaching us with that uh, swirl of frost around him. Make sure you stay out of that swirl of frost because it kills you. The abomination dies and we head out of the instance. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Make sure and stay tuned. I do intend to post at least one more blood tanking video and I'd like to share my thoughts on blood tanking in general.